Wow, another article about the, um, the pension public employee situation going on in Wisconsin. Uh, maybe it's time for me to just take a minute or so here in City 101 to talk about that. Why? Well, obviously because we're Minnesota public employees um, and people listening to what's going on in Wisconsin and reading those kinds of articles maybe don't have the exact story of what's different between Wisconsin and Minnesota with respect to public pensions especially and maybe some other states as well. Now before I even go into it, I know what you're thinking. I'm a public employee and I'm going to give you some sort of a self-serving biased report on public pensions. Well, I'm not. I'm just going to stick to facts because I think it's important for the public to know. Let's just talk about Wisconsin and Minnesota for a second. Better yet, let's just talk about Minnesota first. Minnesota has three different major public pension plans. One is called TRA which is the Teachers Retirement Association, and that represents certified teachers across all the school districts in Minnesota. A second one is called MSRS, and that's the Minnesota State Retirement System, and that, as you might guess, that includes all of the state employees. They belong to MSRS. And then there's PERA, and that's the Public Employee Retirement Association. That's the biggest one. That represents city employees, county employees, and a lot of school district employees that aren't certified teachers, like people who work in the cafeterias or the custodians or, or the bus drivers. It's a very large public pension plan. And in Minnesota, I think it's about a quarter million people that are covered uh, one way or another through PERA. I know a little bit about it because I was one of three elected uh, Minnesota employees, active employees, uh, who were elected to represent uh, employees on the Minnesota Public Employer Retirement Association Board of Trustees. I served on that board for about 10 years and uh, I served and I was elected by that board to become its vice president and ultimately its president. So I served as president of Minnesota PERA Board of Trustees for um, certainly it was over a year. I'm thinking it was probably more like a year and a half, two years. So there's the three different pension plans. The big difference between the Minnesota's pension plans and what you have going on in Wisconsin right now is in Minnesota, there's no such thing as collective bargaining about your pension. The state legislature tells you what you're going to do, what you're, what you're going to have for a public pension in Minnesota. That's different than Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, it's, it's included in the collective bargaining process. So if a group of employees can bargain something better from their public sector employer, so to speak, or the state, whatever, then that, be, that can become part of their, their pension program. I think one of the rubs in Wisconsin is that actually Wisconsin public employees don't pay uh, very much out of their own pocket for their own pension. It's different in Minnesota. There's, within PERA, there's basically three subcategories, but there's only two I'm going to talk about. There's the general plan, which would be all of the office, clerical, uh, administrative people that work in Minnesota, the bus drivers, again, in the school district, the cafeteria workers, those people, uh, and then police and fire. In the general plan, which is the, the first one I mentioned, it's, it's required by law that we, uh, that we put in 6.25% of our salary each biweekly pay period or monthly, however we're paid, and that has to go towards our pension. For police and fire, they, they've got to put in 9.6% of their pension. I think in, I'm sorry, of their salary towards their pension. I think in Wisconsin, what they're looking at right now is the governor is trying to get uh, the contribution for Wisconsin employees up around 6%. But keep in mind, in Minnesota, Minnesota employees are paying 6.25% right now. Also in Minnesota, one of the differences uh, is that, uh, for example, the PERA board, and uh, it was when I was on it back in the uh, probably 2004, 2005, 2006 time frame, we do actuarial studies on, uh, on, a, on a fairly frequent basis. And we take a look at what the unfunded liability of the plan might be. That is having enough money to have the plan fully funded by the time it's supposed to be. And I think in Minnesota, it's 2030. Looking at that data, we made recommendations to the legislature that future increases 
for retirees be limited to 1%. That was a, that was a huge takeaway from what had been in the, in the past. In the, um, in the 90s, it was much more than that. More recently, it was up to 2.5%. But they also, the board that is, went to the legislature with recommendations that employee in, uh, contributions uh, have phased increases to get up to the six and a quarter percent. And because of that, Minnesota's plans, PERA, TRA, and MSRS, are all in, in good financial shape compared to the plans across the country. Now, are they, all, are they fully funded? No. But I will tell you that they're on the path to becoming fully funded. And it's a different situation than states like Illinois, which has a huge deficit in their pension plans. The city of Chicago has some huge deficits in, in their pension plans. And there's other states across the United States that I could uh, mention uh, that have some real financial uh, uh, potholes, so to speak, in their, um, in their path to full funding in their plans. The other thing I want to mention is that just to be clear, what, what kind of pension benefits do they get? Let me tell you, in the, in the general plan of PERA, and again, that's administrative office, technical, and the, some of the school workers, 63% of the retirees receiving a pension in that plan get less than $1,000 a month. When you add in all of the police and fire to that and all the correctional officers, you put, the, put them all together into a full PERA, 77% of those people get a pension of less than $2,000 a month. So, you know, it depends on what your perspective is. Um, that's not an extravagant pension, I, I don't believe. And again, the escalator or the cost of living for that plan is limited to 1%. Um, I don't, uh, it's Social Security, for example, they have cost of living escalators. I don't believe that they're limited to 1%. But again, I'm not making an argument for or against public pensions. I just want folks to be clear what the pensions in Minnesota are like and, and, how they're, and how they're different from what you may be reading about in other parts of the country. Well, I'm not gonna make a complicated City 101 out of this. I just wanted to present some baseline information. One last thing I wanna say. I've, I've gotten emails and I've had people say to me, well, wow, you public employees, when, you're, when you get your early pensions or whatever, you get your health insurance paid for until you're Medicare eligible. Well, for the vast, vast majority of public employees in Minnesota, that's not the case. Under PERA, our, our pension program, there is no uh, insur health insurance payment benefit that goes with it. It's simply, it's your pension benefit and then you have to find, for example, those 63% whose pension is less than the $1,000 a month. If they decide to retire early, you know, between their social security, if they're eligible and their pension and other assets they have, they've got to find the premiums to pay their own, for the most part, most of them have to find their own uh, premiums to pay for their health insurance. So um, it's not a, it, this is not an all encompassing uh, information piece about public pensions in Minnesota, just a baseline, but I wanted people to have a basic understanding of how Minnesota public pensions are a little different than Wisconsin and maybe some of the other things you're reading about in, the cur in current events today. Thanks for watching another City 101. We'll see you next time.